Hello, my name is Thomas and I've made this steno keyboard here and it's open source and in this video I will show you how you, to make your own. So the first thing it's made of is this PCB board here. I actually need two of them and you can order them in any PCB shop near you. Then I've used those pin headers as spacers in between the two layers. So you have a nice and neat surface on the bottom. No short circuits, nothing abrasive. And I've used some silicon adhesive uh, pads for a nice touch finish. The keys are made of those um, quite standard issue mechanical keyboard key switches with the caps on top. And they fit in those holes here, but more, more on that on, in an instant. And the last thing is this Raspberry Pi RP2040 microcontrol board that you can find in any electronics shop these days and they are quite cheap. So all of the, the instructions and the links will be given in the description below. So let's start. The first thing to do is to take those headers here. We're going to cut two, the code cut them two by two. And then we take two layers of PCB and we shoot any hole here and press down the plastic, press, press down plastic piece here so that the length of the metal that's uh, on this side is just equal to the thickness of one layer of PCB. We do that a few times and then we can place those pins as we like, spread about in a spacers on the, on the circuit board just, I don't know, half a dozen of them. And then you can use them as spacers. So you put the second layer of PCB and then carefully you solder those headers here. So just be careful because if you um, happen to have a pin so if you put your connector here, you can use uh, their holes inside the connector to let the pin through. But uh, if you go here, those holes might interfere. So if you, pin, if you put your headers in this hole here, then you can no longer put this connector here. It's going to interfere. One more thing to no notice about the keys is that, so they fit in those holes here, but in places like this or here or here, you have a choice of actually having one switch in the middle, and then you have one of those two U keycaps that have three different uh, pinholes at the bottom, or you could choose to have two different switches and each one with its keycap. So the reason you want, might want to do that is that those two U keycaps are a little bit uh, more difficult to source. A word about the switches themselves. So uh, the footprints meaning the, the location, the, the sizing uh, and, and position of the holes on the keyboard on the PCB are quite standard. However, there are a few variations. So some of those uh, key switches here have two extra pins that help with the positioning. These don't have them. And that as a consequence, so they're working fine, but uh, they, their positioning is uh, less precise. They have a little bit of room for wiggle and that can lead to um, aesthetics uh, imperfections like you have here where the keys are not really parallel to the to each other. 
and I've also used some hot glue to anchor the key switches to the circuit board so they don't wiggle. The two layers of PCB are attached together with hot glue so it's easy to disassemble if needed. Once that's done, we're going to need to flash the microcontroller here. So you need to download the firmware, the MicroPython firmware on the uh, RP2040 Raspberry Pi Foundation uh, website. Then you press down the boot button here. You plug your USB cable here and a new disk appears on your desktop. So you take the image that you've downloaded from the Raspberry Pi website, just move it to the new disk and MicroPython is flashed on your, on your microcontroller. Next you'll want to start Sony. Configure it to connect to your microcontroller. So here it is. Here we have a Python prompt. Okay, and then you open your two files. yak and main and you just save as it should appear here rp2040 device you save both files and you're good to go so when both files are saved you unplug and replug so unplug quit tony replug and you can start Plover. So Plover needs to be configured with a Gmini PR protocol. In configure here, you can choose the, you need to choose a port. So it will be the same port number as you found on uh, Tony here. Okay. And then you make sure that it's connected and output is enabled. And you take any text editor and you can start typing text on your or numbers on your steno keyboard.